Welcome to No Longer Conformed, my online preaching and teaching ministry. We're studying the book of Matthew, uh, the first gospel. In this session, we'll be looking at Matthew chapter 10, verses 24 to 42, called to be a disciple. Sacrificing for the cause of God's kingdom may mean going into danger and never returning. Christians are called to be disciples, becoming like their master. Disciples meaning learners, followers. Our text for this session presents a certain mindset for disciples of Jesus, a mindset with priorities in order. Chapter 10, verses 27 down to verse 42. First of all, Jesus taught the fear of God. Verse 27 of chapter 10. Whatever I tell you in the dark, speak in the light. And what you hear in the ear, preach on the rooftops. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin? And not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore. You are of more value than many sparrows. So Jesus taught the fear of God. Second, Jesus called for confession before the world. Verses 32 down to verse 33. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. So Jesus taught the fear of God. He called for confession before the world. And in third, Jesus declared following him brings division. Won't be easy. Verses 34 down to verse 39. Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemies will be those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will find it. And then fourth, Jesus stated he is honored through ministry. Verse 40 to 42. He who receives you receives me, and he who receives me receives him who sent me. He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple, assuredly I say to you, he shall by no means lose his reward. What's the point here? Jesus' disciples should expect the same treatment he received when they serve him in the world. Verse 24 to 26, a disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It, it is enough for a disciple that he be like his teacher and a servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house, Beelzebub, how much more would they call those of his household? Therefore, do not fear them, for there is nothing covered that will not be revealed and hidden that will not be known. Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Verse 16. Wolves are false prophets. Matthew chapter, chapter 7, verse 15. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they're ravenous wolves. 
False prophets have two goals in their plans. Persecute true prophets and destroy the church. Paul understood this. Acts chapter 20, verse, 9, verse 29. For I know this, that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Listen, it's not easy to serve the Lord in a world that hates you. The time will come when you'll be hated by everyone. You'll be brought into court on false charges. You'll be punished for committing no crimes. You'll be called to stand before hostile leaders or killed if considered too great a threat. Perse persecution of believers has been government policy at times over the centuries simply because Christians have chosen to identify with their Savior Jesus Christ. Why would Jesus send Christians into such a hostile and dangerous environment? Because there are many unbelievers in the world. And, take a deep breath here, persecution gives an opportunity to testify to the truth of the gospel. 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 14 to 16. But even if you should suffer for righteousness, you're blessed. And don't be afraid of their threats. Don't be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. And always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you the reason for their hope that is in you, for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear, having a good conscience, that when they defame you as evildoers, those who revile your good conduct in Christ may be ashamed. Your eternal life is secure, but there are so many with no hope heading to hell. You give that some thought. You have a great day.